In this video, we'll demonstrate how Kirchhoff's and Ohm's laws can be used to uh, analyze a circuit and determine currents and voltages flowing in the circuit. Before we get started, let's just remind ourselves of Kirchhoff's law, or I'm sorry, of Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that in a resistor, for a voltage referenced plus to minus, if the current is referenced flowing from the positive to negative terminal, in other words, flowing in the direction of voltage drop, then V is equal to I times R. On the other hand, if current is referenced in the direction of voltage increase, so that as you cross the resistor, you're experiencing an increase in voltage, V is equal to negative I times R. So in this video, we're going to be using Kirchhoff's laws, summing the currents at a node, and summing the voltage drops around a closed loop in conjunction with Ohm's law. So we'll be using Ohm's law to represent the voltage drop across these resistors. So here we go. Looking at this, we see that we have two nodes. One, two nodes. Thus, we'll be able to get one independent node equation. We also see that there are three, one, two, three loops in this circuit, which means that we can get two independent voltage loop or um, uh, loop equations from this circuit. So let's start summing. Oh, first of all, we need to identify our currents. Again, identifying currents is totally arbitrary. Let's call that one I1, reference going into the node. This one we'll call I2, flowing out of the node. And this one I3, flowing out of the node that way. I'm going to start by writing a node equation, so KCL at the top node. I1 is referenced into the node. Currents into the node have a negative sign on them, so minus I1, I2, and I3 are both leaving, so plus I2 plus I3, the sum of those three currents equals zero. Now let's look at doing KVL around the left-hand loop. KVL left. We'll start at this point right here. And let's go in the counterclockwise direction. This battery, this DC voltage source, has its positive terminal at the upper side and negative terminal here. So if we're starting here going in this direction, we're going from a lower voltage to a higher voltage. That's a voltage increase, and voltage increase is negative. Now, coming across this 50 ohm resistor, we're going in the direction of I1, therefore the going in the direction of voltage drop, and the voltage drop across that 50 ohm resistor will just be plus 50 times I1. Now, coming down this side here, we again are going in the direction of current flow, so the voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor will be plus 10 times I2 and the sum of those terms equals zero. Finally, KVL around this right-hand loop. Um, let's go ahead and start here. And we'll go in this direction. This time, we're going against, or in the opposite direction of the current flow. That represents a voltage increase. Therefore, there will be a negative 25 times I3. Coming down here, across the 50 ohm resistor, this time we're going against the current I1. Again, that represents a voltage increase, and it'll have a negative sign. So minus 50 I1. And then across the battery here, starting at the positive terminal and leaving the negative terminal, that's a voltage drop, so that will be plus 10 volts the sum of those has to equal zero. Now, let's rewrite these equations with the variables on the left-hand side and the constants on the right-hand side. When we do that, we'll have negative I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. The second equation is a positive 50I1 plus 10I2. There are no I3 terms there, so we bring this minus 10 over to the other side as a positive 10. And finally, the third equation 
has a negative 50 I1. There are no I2 terms. Uh, whoops, minus, that's a minus sign, minus I minus 25 I3 equals, now I have a positive 10 here, which I'm going to take to the other side of the equation as a negative 10. So we've got this system of three equations which we've rewritten and gotten into a more standard form. Now let's take the time to go ahead and solve this just to show you a couple of different ways of solving systems of equations. Let's do it the first time, kind of a brute force way, using a combination of elimination and so on. Notice this first equation can be rewritten as I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So let's take that expression for I1 and substitute for I1 in each of these other two equations, thus eliminating I1. When we do that, we will have, in the, first, in the second equation, 50 times I1, but I1 is I2 plus I3, plus 10I2. There are no I3 terms in the equation itself equals 10. And substituting for I1 in the, second, in the third equation, we have a minus 50 times, uh, let's see here, minus 50 times I2 plus I3, minus 25 times I3, equals a minus 10. Let's just clean these up. We've got 50 I2 plus 10 I2. That's 60 I2 plus 50 I3 equals 10. And in this bottom one, we've got minus 50 I2 And we have a minus 50 I3, minus 25 I3. That gives us a minus 75 I3 equals minus 10. Now in these two e remaining equations, we can eliminate the I3 term. If we multiply the top equation by 3, that will give us 3 times 50 is 100 and positive 150 I3. And if we multiply this bottom equation by 2, that will give us a minus 150 I3. The I3 terms will cancel and we'll be left with I2. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply the top one by 3. And we'll multiply this bottom one by 2. Maybe put a couple of parentheses around here to show what we're doing. So 3 times 60 gives us 180 I2 plus 3 times 50 is one. 50 I3 equals 3 times 10 is 30. Multiplying the second equation by 2 gives us a negative 100 I2 minus 150 I3 is equal to a negative 20. Now, add these two equations together and we get 80 I2, again the I3s cancel, is equal to uh, positive 10. 30 minus 20 is 10. Thus, we get that I2 is equal to 10 over 80, or I2 is equal to 1 eighth, which in decimal form is 0.125 amps. Now, with that value of I2, we can plug into either one of these two equations that have both I2 and I3, and we'll be able to solve for I3. So let's plug I2 equals 0.125 into the top one, and we've got 60 times 0.125 plus 50 I3 equals 10. Solving that for I3 gives us I3 is equal to 0 0.05. Now we can use this value for I3 and this value for I2 and plug it into any one of these equations that we want. This one looks like a real convenient one. I1 is just equal to I2 plus I3. I1 equals 
I2 plus I3, which is 0.125 amps plus 0 0.05 amps, that gives us I1 is equal to 0.175 amps. And of course you can verify these solutions by plugging them in to our original system of equations and you'll see that they do satisfy them. Now, let's just, for completeness sake, or just show you another way of solving this, let's go back to our original, or not to our original, but to this system right here, the system in this form, where we have all the variables on one side and we have the constants on the other side. This is set up for us to put it right into a matrix solver. If we define or recast this system in matrix form, where we have the coefficient matrix, which has just the coefficients of these three equations. The top equation is minus 1. The uh, second uh, value, the I2 coefficient, is 1. The third is 1. Coming down to the second equation, we have 50, 10. There are no I3 terms, so that'll be a 0. And then the bottom one, we have a minus 50. That's minus 50. No I2 terms, and a minus 25 in the I3. Then, of course, we have our variable vector I1, I2, and I3. And that is equal to the constants 0, 10, and negative 10. Plug that into a matrix solver, and you get the same values I1, I2, and I3. When you get the same values in two different ways, you're pretty confident that you've got the right solution.